Willow. 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 Willow's back. Willow is getting deleted from Disney Plus, and in the finale, it's like the cast knew. The maps end, and our final test begins. No one who's got out there has actually ever come back. This is shocking for a show like Willow, which had such a great script. Go ahead, kid. Fetch me some brown possum butter. Sprinkle it on my bum and make my gentle wind smell like cinnamon. An incredible cast. Taking me a long time to figure out who I am. Could you stop heavy breathing, please? It's really distracting. A wholesome story about true love. You're gonna be a great night. <laughs> <laughs> and topped off to perfection with a twist that nobody saw coming. I admit I'm disappointed. The cameraman wasn't there, was he? No, not that, you fool. We've moved on. A mother gives birth. Her body makes milk for the child. Stop, please stop. It's nourishment. It's the part of himself that he gives to us. Okay, coming's probably the wrong word in this scenario. But what's so astonishing about this is Willow ended just five months ago. And for Disney to delete it means it's more profitable to yeet it from existence than it is just to keep it on their platform. And the writers are pissed. From John Bickerstaff, he, him. They gave us six months, not even this business has become absolutely cruel. The only conclusion is that this is to get out of paying residuals. What, you think a platform will remove a show that nobody's watching? just so they don't have to pay you residuals as a charity case? Yes, I am loving the writer's attitude that they should just get paid, even when nobody watches anything that they produce. <laughs> to have to respect the sheer amount of gall required. And Brittany Jang, who is also a writer on Willow, says, My first episode of TV is being wiped from the streamer after only six months. Some people would take that as a bit of a hint. You might want to get yourself added to the writing credits. But Twitter had a tactic. We need to apply pressure to Disney to make sure that we get a season two anyway. Because deleting Willow is only doing one thing. Caving to bigots. So, what do you think? I think it's a beautiful lie. You don't want to send the wrong kind of message in the wake of your fight with Florida, do you? This is disturbing. Look, dude, I probably spent over a hundred hours talking about Willow. I understand exactly how disturbing the show is. And how glorious. They truly nail that Goldilocks zone of being absolutely terrible and incredibly hilarious. Yes, it tried to tell jokes, and some of them were actually funny for once. But so much of it was funny for all of the wrong reasons. And so for me, the world will be a darker place without Willow in it. And that meant we could only do one thing. If Disney is deleting such a masterclass of entertainment from their service, then I really only had one path left open to me. To give Willow the send-off it deserves. So join me as we go backstage into the making of Willow to find out exactly why this show is getting yeeted off the face of the planet. It's worm secretion. It'll taste really nice. Don't lick your lips, love. What was that? Oh, you could tell she enjoyed that one. Look, if nothing else, at least we know the cast had a great time making the show. Oh, hats off to the color grading guy, eh? How do we turn a drab, boring episode of Gotham Knights into this? Ten years after the movie was released, a week would not go by without somebody wanting to talk about Willow. Yeah, but what about after you release the TV show? I mean, after it got cancelled, I have never received so much sympathy on Twitter in my life, but... I kind of feel like I'm a bit of an edge case. I'd love to hear your experience. All right, the making of. Let's hit us with the nostalgia train straight away. That seems a bit condescending, mate. There's no need to look down on him like that. First thing I did with George was Return of the Jedi. Well, I'm glad you've shaved since then, mate. That laser hair removal's coming on a treat. George Lucas had said that he wanted to make a story where the hero was unlikely and not what you would expect a hero to be. Well, that's certainly true in the TV series, where the hero was Kit, somebody who had been insufferable the entire series. This is somebody who got told that Laura Dunham was the only person who could prevent the apocalypse and still went, yeah, but why doesn't everyone pay attention to me? And I could have got him, I could have brought him back, and I could have finally understood why every time he chose you instead of me. It's not about you! Oh, it's so annoying! So I watched the original to refresh my memory of, of everything and all the characters and to remember how fun it was. Well, I'm glad you did the minimum amount of research that I would expect from everyone in the crew. You know, I am a costume designer on this massive production, 
Maybe I should spend 90 minutes watching the original source material. But those 90 minutes, seriously, I mean, I could be on the picket line right now. Of course this one. He's killed me four times in three films. He doesn't like me. He had to resurrect you just so he could kill you again in the same movie. Really makes you wish he was involved in the TV series. I mean, imagine the fun we could have had with that one. I feel like it's a movie that doesn't take itself too seriously. Well, I'll have to give you that one, love. I mean, it was a comedy. And that would be my advice for anyone watching Willow the TV series. Accept its trash as a starting point, and then go from there. It's mainly fun if you revel in what's in front of you. It was successful when it came out, but it, you know, it didn't have this sort of place in pop culture. Then how successful was it? It was really successful, it was amazing, everybody loved it, but no one could really remember it afterwards. Yeah, it's largely like Ant-Man Quantumania. By the time you got home, you'd forgotten what you've watched. Did have the advantage that people would go and see it twice, because they forgot they even seen it in the first place. Indiana Jones and Star Wars were the biggest things ever. We're not going to compare Willow to Star Wars, are we? <laughs> there was this other thing. There was Willow. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. We are just starting, but if those are the levels of delusion, then this is going to be good. George Lucas had always wanted not so much to do a sequel, but to develop it further on television. What a coincidence. Bearing in mind that this came out after the show had already aired, so this isn't marketing. We're still going to go, well, this series is what George Lucas would have wanted. <laughs> When Disney Plus came along, we felt like, well, there's a real home for this. And he was absolutely right for about five months. I mean, it's less of a home and more of a rental, but at least we found a place where we belonged. To all the fans who've waited over 30 years, the wait is over. Remember, this was after the show had already released. You waited 30 years for this. Did you like it? <laughs> Kasdan, he's been kind of building this world up. Oh no, so he's responsible, is he? Are you sure that's the line you want to take with this? Bringing his own kind of sensibility, humor, and heart. Houston, I think they found their scapegoat. It has nostalgia, of course, for those of us that love the original movie. It has the original cast, what's your point, love? But it feels so fresh and modern and- It feels so fresh! and modern. If she says it's made for a modern audience, I need to take a break. So there's a specificity to Willow. Of course there is. It's Willow. He's not somebody else. Willow is specifically Willow. I would single-handedly be the most disliked person in Hollywood simply for calling them on lines like that. This, like, dusty volume with Willow on its spine. And, like, I wanted to write more of that book. The guy literally did an entire speech about how he wanted to write more of Willow in the making of Willow behind the scenes. I mean, I don't know about anyone else, but I kind of assumed that that was the case, given the fact that it happened, and you're getting paid to do it. But he also respects the skills, the different qualities each cast member brings. Yeah, but he didn't respect Willow, did he? In fact, he specifically humiliated Willow in the TV series. You're Willow Ufgood, greatest sorcerer. I'm not actually mediocre at best. Willow Ufgood here is terrified that one day he'll be discovered as the aging, talentless hack that he really is. There was even a part where he let his best friend die because he couldn't be bothered to do magic to save him. He could have done magic to save him. He just thought it might tire him out too much. Despite the fact that by the finale, he was just smashing off magic all over the place with no problem at all. Laugh it up, sisters. Yeah, I think as a new cast, there is pressure stepping in and taking over like such a beloved story. In the TV series, I congratulate you on your fake accent. But secondly, what was this one? Reading the <laughs> scripts, this thing was gonna live or die according to the cast. Is that your opinion? Hey, this show is gonna live or die based on the cast. Firstly, given what's happened, not very complimentary of the cast. Secondly, it's not true. I don't have that many problems with the cast, maybe the foreign prince, but for the rest, no. It was definitely the writing. It's like when it comes to Kiss, I have zero issues with the actress. I think she did the part well. It was what she'd been given. <laughs> I had a lot of, I think it's that way. A lot of horsework going on today. Well, at least we know there was as much comedy going on behind the scenes as there was in front of it. What are you getting on? No, I, I'll get the next one. Oh, okay. There is so much going on right now, I have no idea what to even say about it. I met Ruby, who plays Kit, who's my twin, on a FaceTime. Sometimes it's possible to get overwhelmed with potential comments and have nothing to say because of it. I don't even know what this position is meant to be. <laughs> And within like two seconds, I just said, I think I know you. Did you actually know her though? Progressively, person by person by person, we all kind of said the same thing. So you didn't know her, you were just delusional. <laughs> by the way, I think I know you. Oh no, we're just carbon copies of the same output of a socio-economic machine. We're so unique. That's why we're all the same. When we're all six of us are together, like, that's always very fun. You can never get anything shot, but it's very fun. That sounds like a great combination for a TV series. Yeah, when we get the cast together, we can't film anything. What was it like working with Warwick Davis? 
Um... Well, that's a good sign. What's your first impression of him? Well... How long have you got? Warwick has a lot of passion. Yeah, it's exploding out from him because he just can't fit it in such a small stature. Pretty passionate. <laughs> this is what I mean about the show being funny. He, he has so many great ideas. Dude, it's a shame you didn't put that quality acting into the show. Can we get this thing towed out in his expense, please? There's a lot of ideas for everyone about everything, whether you want them or not. Let's face it, given the quality show, it was probably necessary. I mean, you have to remember, this is Warwick Davis. Sure, he couldn't act in the first episode, but by the end, he actually got quite good at it again. Don't ask me how that happened, because I don't know either. Very masculine of you, mate. Congratulations. He likes to remind people he's number one on the call sheet. What number were you? I would uh, love to know. Which is, which is helpful. Quiet, please. Don't do this twice. Well, that's lucky because they're not going to give you a chance. I'm Warwick Davis and I play Willow. Hang on. No, do it again. That was rubbish. Unfortunately, they're not going to give you the opportunity. We had five months to turn this ship around and unfortunately we drove it straight into a wall. Which is surprising because this is a ship. We're supposed to be in the ocean. Best hair people, makeup people, set designer people. But apparently not blacksmiths. I hate to break it to you, but there's something wrong with that sword. Best hair people, makeup people, set designer. Wait, why did you focus on her? That was cruel. Oh, well, obviously, when we said hair people, there's only one person we could choose. Just blown away at the level of detail. Oh, that's certainly one way to describe it, mate. Regret my life decisions would also have been acceptable, given your scenario. It was, like, really cool to walk around in there. It's very easy to actually get lost for real. It doesn't look that difficult. It looks more like a tunnel with a blue exit at one end. I get the feeling this wasn't very big, it was just a column. It's not just like one tiny little corner that everyone squeezes into. I don't know, it looks like one little tiny corner that everyone squeezes into. You can't see behind us, is what visual effects is gonna do later. We'll fix it in post. It's like the rallying war cry for every series which is about to get yeeted off the face of the planet. I think you can tell how epic a TV show is going to be by the amount of green screen that they put on the floor. Even though this is already an epic location, gonna be five or 10 times taller. Oh, come on, now you're just insulting Wales. Oh, we're really proud to be part of Wales. Wales is integral to Willow's identity as a set. And you know, while it's already an epic landscape, it's just going to be more epic when we actually entirely change it via CGI. <laughs> it's really epic, but it's gonna be 10 times more epic when we get hold of it. Oh, you're doing Wales dirty. So we're in Badwater's High Tower. That's where the climax of uh, Willow. I think we've seen one of the those climaxes before. We see our characters from 1988 and they interact with our characters from 2021. I know you meant that part to be epic, but really it was like, oh, really? <laughs> Do we have to put up with you again? From 2021, they're in the right position, line up with the footage that we have to hand. Okay, that's actually genuinely cool. I'm seeing these sets reconstructed for the series. Most of this location in the movie was a painting. Except it was entirely different in the movie. Okay, so this is how it should have looked, and this is how it did look. This dais part was the only thing that existed. The rest of it was a matte painting. So he's talking about reality and the difference between green screening. We wanted to have it very similar to what it looked like in the movie. I mean, of course you did. That's the entire point of a TV series, which is linked to the movie. By the way, folks, we're going back to the original sets of the original movie but they're gonna look nothing like what they did over there. I know that's actually pretty normal for Hollywood entertainment right now, but this shouldn't be a surprising thing that you have to tell people. I did forget about this. You get a maquette, you get a full-size sculpt. You get one of your main cast having a love affair with a fish. Oh, you may think I'm joking. Oh no, in the finale, there's basically a storyline where one of the main cast presumably bangs a fish. It's not the first time a guy's ever said to his partner, it looks like it's time for sushi, but it's never meant this. Discuss possibilities of how it'll look for real. It's not how it looks that's the problem, love. It's what you did with it. Here we are. Yeah, the creatures are amazing. Actually, my favorite creatures were the, um, the were-rats. Oh, at least you didn't say the fish. Oh, it was bad enough with one of you. I didn't need two. Armatured puppets with moving parts and fingers and eyes. And you say moving fingers? I mean, how many fingers does a rat have? It looked so creepy and real. It was covered in slime. It was gross. I loved it. Hey, if you love things that are gross, I can understand and why you're a big fan of Willow. Was Kit your favorite character? I have to know. When I met my first troll. He was called Dave. First time I've ever been unhinged. Never went back on after that. I learned my lesson. Detail that Neil had put into everything, even the little warty things that they had on their bodies. There's got to be a name for them. By the way, Steve, I need you to remain still. I've got to apply the little warty things. Uh, people always ask me, you know, oh, this is creepy. Um, I guess that means you did your job really well considering he's out of character. I say out of character. One of the problems with the trolls in the TV series is that they just acted like normal people. So who can tell? Do I use Stanislavski or Meisner? Which I always tell them is a trick question because it would be no Meisner without Stanislavski. I actually have no idea what you just said. 
I was too busy thinking who could stack more of a deck of cards in their face, you or Gordon Ramsay. And Pippa, the makeup designer, or inspiring. I think she brings a wonderful naturalism. So Pippa, the makeup artist, she's amazing. She makes everyone look natural. Surely the natural thing would be to not have a makeup artist. We needed our heroes to be really relatable. When Did you have to show him when you said we need our heroes to be relatable? The soft, useless, destroyed excuse for a man who turns evil at the end of it. A man is so destroyed by reality that he gets turned down by every woman in the cast, which eventually turns him to the dark side, where he decides to join up and drink the worm secretion. He's just so relatable for men. Watches it to kind of go, oh, that, I, kinda, I could be that person. That I could be that person. I could be a traitor to his friends that turns evil. I could be the person that will actually never amount to anything and is utterly despised by his own father. I've kind of got an agreement that I look the best out of all the characters here in the show. It's probably true, let's be honest. I'd say Warwick is very hands-on. Unless it requires getting something out the top of the fridge. I'm a perfectionist. Every tiny detail on a film set matters, and I want to be part of that. I think you've achieved that, Mike. In fact, I think that's definitionally required. He's involved in wardrobe makeup, production design. He definitely seems to have come from a theatrical background with that much overacted. He's our on-set medic, which is weird because he doesn't really have any medical background or training at all. To be fair, Disney didn't really care what happened to you after six months anyway. It's not as if they were going to need you for the second production. Part of me thinks it is very irresponsible and also weird. You're literally a knight where an ancient order made a special exemption for you to even get in and then proceeded to fall for Kit of all people and think that anything else in the show is weird. But then on the other hand, I was, I was choking on a chicken bone and he did save my life, so. I don't know what you were doing eating chicken bones to begin with, but apparently it's just what we do nowadays. You know what? it's like with Zoomers, if they don't have a safety warning, they have no idea what to do. He insists on picking up all of the actors. Weirdly, like, he'll do it for all of them. That guy is way too tall to fit into that car. He liked re he seemed to really struggle to fit. Except for Ellie. Based economy. That's understandable, just from the accent alone. Seems to be, like, actively sabotaging her call sheet. Where is she, actually? Where's Ellie? No idea. I didn't watch this before recording this video, so I didn't know what to expect either. <laughs> but I do think if you're gonna lock a cast member away, it definitely should have been Kit. We got some great ones of me though, didn't we? Well, this is Willow after all, so uh, that's all you need. You know, the sad thing is, that should really be true. Whereas instead in the TV series, he was humiliated. Mediocre at best. Willow Uthcourt here is terrified that one day he'll be discovered as the aging, talentless hack that he really is. Yes, by the end, he actually turned into a really good character and was incredibly powerful. It's just. That's what they should have had at the start. If anything, I think that should be Willow's legacy. That they started desperately trying to hit every single social topic they possibly could, and only towards the end did they get to a place where they should have started. We were most excited about continuing the story of Laura Dannon. What a surprise! We were most excited about the person who was barely a character in the first series. You've made a TV series called Willow, and you're not even most excited about Willow. And has now moved into the central role of this series. Yeah, except now she's a central role where for some reason, if you're born there, you just magically know the area like a Ubisoft game. How do you know where to go? I was born here. You're supposed to be a sorceress, not a GPS. This is the person that he sort of lost. Are you now realizing why it was stupid to start her with blonde hair? Sat down with Warwick and told him that Alora Dannon would finally be in this story. And his response immediately was, why? Based economy. It's called Willow. Look, you've got Willow Ulfgod, a master sorcerer who has already saved the world from evil before. And then you've got a Laura who bakes muffins. I don't know, I can just understand his hesitation myself. I genuinely actually think Warwick is a bit intimidated by Ellie. No. A scripted Disney production where a man is intimidated by his other half? Say it isn't so. I don't want to say that it's sabotage, but it is. Does she really need sabotaging though? Half the TV series, she couldn't even do magic. No, that's ridiculous. Are you kidding? Laura really likes me. What is this accent? No, that's ridiculous. Are you kidding? No, that's absolutely ridiculous. I think maybe at one point he got the idea that I wanted to call on the show Alora Dannon. Hey, I'm liking this Willow guy more and more. A major through line in season one is Alora Dannon learning to become more powerful than Willow. Yeah, I mean, it's a Disney production. It was extremely predictable. Look, we've got Willow. He's the main character of the movie and the series is literally named after him. By the way, this new woman's appeared and she's more powerful than him. <laughs> 
She also only learned magic last week, but she's already overtaken him. The fact that her wands kept disappearing from set was unsubtle and problematic. You did not say the word. What was it again? Unsubtle and problematic. How dare you film in Wales with that kind of terminology? I think Warwick's been snapping Ellie's wands. Is that a euphemism? In fact, I know yes. You've been watching him. We've got security cameras. You have been watching him, you dirty dog, you. No wonder you look so pleased with yourself. Tell me, which accent is the one that she uses on the security cameras? Okay. Look, look, look. Okay. Look, there's the snatch. There's the snap. Based economy. Look, he's the main character of a movie series. He gets his own TV series, and then you try and replace him. I gotta be honest, this show's just making me like Warwick more and more. Must be like 37. What an absolute chad. <laughs> The horse is blind, you don't know where he's going. I mean, this is disgusting. You're not even wearing it over your nose, mate. I mean, I'm sure he can't ride a horse and you need a green-screened horse for it, but the rest of this scene is, ugh. You bring shame and dishonor on your house, sir. Just here we go. Three, two, one. Sugar! I think he's arrived. <laughs> Thank you so much. You did a great job today. I'm sure he did, mate. I can understand why you're thanking him. I've never been more satisfied with an actor's performance. Hiya, you all right? Yeah, chat. Yeah, definitely. She said a chat, mate, not a tell-all scandal. Body land Boom. on the floor. <laughs> Let's look at his face. Boom. on the floor. What is that? You know, it, all of the actors were doing all of their own work. It is funny how it looks more impressive behind the scenes than it did in the TV series. Maybe you should have shown this before you showed the series. Sensational. We put I mean, that was impressive. Couldn't you have petitioned them to make your character a bit more likable throughout the entire series? It may have gone down better, that's all I'm saying. Why did you put this much effort into your performance and then allow them to make you so insufferable as a character? I cast through an awful lot of... Um, Don't worry, love, we've all been there. Physical rigour <laughs> on the shoot. I mean, that's one word for it, love. Are you okay? Yeah, 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 all good. Jeez. Did you just kick her in the face? <laughs> I think you just kicked her in the face. These actors, I guess. They're say. so great. I mean, it's and so game. Yeah, they're so game. <laughs> <laughs> what's going on? You know what's great about our cast? They're really game. They really let you grab them by the- Okay, we're moving on. Incredible to watch them grow, seeing them fight so well. That sword fight was so slow, I went to check what speed the video was playing at. Yeah, we have a great young cast. Ellen, Mario, Dennis, and there's Tommy. <laughs> I didn't mean to pause it on this face, but seriously, what on earth is going on here? They're all relatively uh, good in a show. <laughs> Look, going into this, I knew it was a kind of mockumentary, but I didn't expect all the backhanded compliments from Warwick. Whoever wrote the behind the scenes stuff, just get him to write the second series, please. Please, I'm begging you. We have an amazing sun team, obviously an incredible sword fighter, and he teaches me how to sword fight. Could he not have taught you to use a different weapon? It's a really stupid weapon. His moves are incredible, and as soon as I do them, I make him look ridiculously bad. Look, I wasn't going to say anything, but as you've said it, it makes my job a lot easier. Because I'm, I'm like a grasshopper. I don't even know what that's meant to mean. You rubbed your legs together to attract a mate? I do like it, though. He's like, yeah, we got a great choreographer, and then he gave the moves to me, and that's why it looks crap. <laughs> Our fight choreographers awesome. The problem is definitely the axes. Are we not going to talk about how your sword has a second sword that you grab and pull out the end to extend the blade? Sword fights everywhere and I'm having a great time. I'm assuming that's because you're a cat person and you have a lot of cardboard boxes behind you. The slogan for my studio is if I fits, I sits. Amazing! Yeah, it was amazing that they got you to do this show. Screw Broken Arrow, they tried to break your career. CC and the team, I mean, these guys are the best. Yeah, so then the enemy's gonna come in and block your sword with his arm. <laughs> Look, this might be the most stupid move in sword fighting I've ever seen. They... We're gonna spin our sword behind our back. And she designed the fights in a way where... And then strafe sideways with her back to the enemy for no reason whatsoever. <laughs> It's just so the moment she approaches us, we can turn around. Why not just turn around before? They don't really put anything in that us is at. No wonder she disarmed you. You didn't even know which way to face in the fight. So we're able to really do it and get into it. They're incredible. I can't speak high enough about that. Yeah, high five that one, mate. Always turn you back to the enemy. Sun Tzu, rule number three. There was the other part of his character there as well. So she disarms him, and then his first reaction isn't to run, isn't to put his fists up. No, what does he do? So we're able to- Ah, please don't hurt me! <laughs> There's that stiff upper lip of a true royal right there. Dempsey Brick as Eric. Brick by name, brick by nature. What does that even mean? Brick by nature. He's incredibly dense. He's been my rock. Why did you need a rock? Are we going through some kind of emotional trauma or something? 
something. He and I has been gym partners. Oh, does that also work if you remove the word gym? <laughs> I'm very grateful for the month long boot camp that we got to do. It would have been tragic. <laughs> Place your bets what would have been tragic about it. <laughs> I didn't go through life knowing how to sword fight, so I'm glad they let us train. Probably the most physically demanding thing I've ever done. Yeah, it's a sword fighting boot camp. Of course it is. I mean, what else have you done that could even remotely come close? She's been in Mayor of East Town. God is a lobster. And my personal favorite, and I'm going to put it on the screen because there's no way that you would believe me if I didn't. A show called... Bottoms. <laughs> hey, onwards and upwards. Although I will say, given the description, it's a great name for it. It really is. Videos. Burning questions. There's your risky click of the day. <laughs> What's your go-to movie theater snack? Raisinets and popcorn. Well, that was a lot less exciting than I thought it would be. Burning questions. What do you shove in your face? I, well, I have to say, that segue did not go where I expected. What's your go-to Friday night feel-good movie? But it's a horror film. I love... Boogie Nights. Close enough. I grew up in California. That actually explains a lot. What is your character in Bottoms, and what do you love about her? I love her because she is very dry, like me. Okay, I think that's enough of that one. I can't believe I know how to sword fight now. One of my favorite quotes is when someone asked Keanu Reeves, so you know how to fight now after the Matrix, and he went, no, I know Hollywood martial arts. I can't help thinking that the sword fighting they learned is an actual sword fighting. Although I don't know what could possibly give me that impression. So she has the weight of the world on her shoulders. Yeah, but that is her fault. She did send away the greatest sorcerer of the region and go, oh, let's just get rid of all our defenses. That'll work. We wouldn't be in this horrible place if it wasn't for you, love. If people knew magic, you could defend yourselves. And then the death dogs appear. I love the fact they called them death dogs. Well, the dogs and they like bring death in it, bruv. And I have to get my sword out that I have put away. It was weird though, wasn't it? I mean, you didn't just put away the sword, you hid it in a gap in the wall behind a secret panel, like Batman. Really pretentious. It's really fun doing a fight again. I had a fight for ages. I guarantee you, whoever's living with her has just put away all the knives. <laughs> so fun. I've not fought anyone in ages. They're my knights and I'm more than capable of dick. <laughs> The way they respond looks like he missed his cue and they're just like, what? Why did that guy just jump over there? Cage full of dick. Are you a bit early there, Martin? Sorry, Steve, you missed your mark, all right? Do you want to try jumping a bit later? Uh, uh, you can see his legs there. He jumps. Cage full of dick. <laughs> A bit early there, Martin. A bit early there, Martin. Do you mind waiting? Smash your face in on a brick wall another day. All right, love. Yeah. Just reset, Martin. You can reset, please. <laughs> yeah, just reset. It's no big deal. Give it a bit more oomph next time. See if you can make it another couple of feet. Now, people watching this may think that this wall's all shot against a green screen. I'm pretty sure I thought it was a green screen. In fact, we are actually out here on the beach. Quality Welsh beaches on display here. Cold, wet, and miserable, like true Britain should be. In the elements, shooting this for real. Slowly freezing to death in the good British countryside. We're in Forest of Dean. I, I remember this one. This is where you forgot your own plot line in the same episode. Started the episode going, this is a magic forest, and anyone that goes in is magically trapped and can't escape. So much so, that the sorceress's minions wouldn't even go in and face the magic. They forgot it was meant to be magic. Yeah, that was just a plot line that never went anywhere. It's basically an area that was a woodland once. It still is a woodland. I can see the trees. The guy before you even introduced it that way. We're in Forest of Dean. The Forest of Dean, a woodland. A lot of it is not us, it's all natural. What, you mean those natural doors in the rock face? We brought in the doors. So that's not natural, that. Will the timber work? You're telling me that stairs don't grow organically in a forest? And if you look carefully, there's a load of little skulls and- Oh, come on, dude, it's whales. You could definitely have found those naturally. So what he means when he says it's all organic is the landscape. <laughs> No one thought you were on a fake earth, mate. Oh, this one. This is just before the forest. They get chased by the magical creatures and they go, oh, how are we going to escape to them? We could go into the forest and like 10 meters away, there's a forest to walk into. A magical forest, which they all forgot about until somebody mentioned it, even though it's 10 meters away in view. Uh, the heroes run through in the beginning of episode five. That's where she shot her one arrow throughout the entire series, even though for most of it, she had a quiver on her back where I'm pretty sure the arrows were glued in. This is, that's why the only time she fires an arrow, there is no quiver and she had to run around holding it. That's the kind of stuff you want in your making of TV series. Don't talk about the fun bits. 
And she missed. Yeah, there was that. Carried a bow and arrow round for episodes, fired one arrow and missed with it. She was wonderful. We're not in Europe and we're not even in the medieval times. The forest was fake. The one part of the story I commented on how stupid it was because there was a forest right next to them that they'd all forgot about. Turned out it's not actually real. There's something mythic about the Welsh countryside that isn't the same as anywhere else. <laughs> it's the sheep and the slightly haunted look in their eyes. Although it is pretty disgusting that she's getting attacked by Lucio from Overwatch. A lot of places that feel distinctly different and can progress in a distinct way. I don't even know what that means. Is it because you realise you just insulted Wales? Yeah, so we're in Wales because we need a load of places that looked different than, you know, normal people. <laughs> They ever they had to look distinct. So, distinct from where? Well, civilization. No, I mean distinctly progress in a distinct way. Please enlighten me on how a field distinctly progresses. I think the biggest benefit is that- Oh, we're just gonna skip over that one, are we? Oh no, she's insulted Wales, quick. Cut to somebody else. Diversity of locations. Oh, even in locations, here we go. He's got a huge array of locations. We've had a field. And we moved on to a, a hill with a field on it. And then we had some trees. Within one hour of Cardiff, you can shoot on beaches, in forests, by lakes. Crap dens. <laughs> It's been an awesome experience to get the cast into the most amazing places. It's Wales. I'm not even knocking Wales. Yes, it's got a lot of landscape that fits the whole fantasy region. That's great. But let's not pretend that Cardiff has the most amazing places. This isn't a coral reef. It's a field, mate. I mean, this is what they showed after they said the most amazing place. I just think we're over-egging the pie. I've got many fond memories of filming in Wales. So I think it was great that we went back to Wales for the series. Basically, we had to go back there again. I don't even think you meant that one. I had lots of fun memories. I think it's good that we went there, but we had to go there. <laughs> it's like, yeah, we didn't actually have a choice. If I had a choice, I wouldn't have gone there. But as we were forced into it, I think it's probably good that we did. You know, after the first Willow came out, I was on fire. I can understand some people not liking the movie, but that's taking it a bit far. People say modern critics are tough. The first movie went to his head a little bit, to be totally honest. I mean, it didn't have far to go, did it? He perceives it as more successful than it actually was. Okay, I do really enjoy the aspect of your making of documentary crapping all over your movie. Just out of interest, how successful do you think the Willow TV series is? He pitched me maybe 20 ideas for Willow sequels. Were any of them, we should do what the book said. None of them really made any sense. Take that as a no. I invented the colon. Biology invented the colon. How on earth did we end up talking about your colon? Sorry, the colon? Yeah, the colon. I tell you, the behind the scenes script is of the same quality of the TV series, isn't it? We've got to play that back. I invented the colon. Sorry, the colon? Yeah, the colon. Oh, genius. It's like Shakespeare. If it wasn't for Warwick's pristine delivery, none of this would have worked. Allows you to make the same movie over and over again. You take the title, put a colon after it, give it another title. No, I thought he meant it's because it came in one end, went out the other, and then you could just reuse it. I honestly thought Warwick Davis was talking about centipedes, but apparently we narrowly avoided that one. I wrote loads of them. Willow, colon, Bavmorda's Revenge. I mean, that is essentially the TV series. Willow, colon, Lost in New York. Can I just say, that's genuinely a better poster than most modern movie posters, where it's just a collection of people's faces with the main male character shoved at the back. Willow colon, spring break colon, Miami Beach. That's a double colon, that one. Yeah, a lot of things happen to colons on Miami Beach. Willow colon, Willow's colon. Oh, he actually went there. I thought it was my joke. I didn't know he was going there as well. Maybe that's why I appreciate Willow so much. We have exactly the same amount of comedic talent. Although if I ever get to a point where Disney want to delete me, I've probably been more successful than I deserved. Public service film about gastrointestinal health. I Ironically, there might be more of a market for that than there was for the TV series. As when it comes to the list of cancellations, you're on the same list as Why the Last Man and Marvel's Empower, which apparently was going to be removed, but they've now updated it. Yeah, maybe making a documentary about female empowerment and then deleting it just a few months later. Didn't really send the right message to our workforce. No, Marvel, you're the one that made your bed and now you've got to sleep in it. In his mind, he thought he was creating the world's first mega franchise. He's not the only one. Look at the writers that are pissed they're getting the show deleted. I mean, they're going to be out on the picket line tomorrow with just a sign that says, how dare you? There was a lot of opportunity for me in those days. That's an impressive paragraph, isn't it? Unfortunately, he may have got confused for a James Bond henchman, but we're not quite sure at the moment. Up against some of the biggest actors in Hollywood. Oh, come on, if he can make him, I can as well. And that's, uh, that's when I met him. Who? What horrific abomination is coming next? I genuinely don't, I haven't seen this, I don't know. 
Oh, that he was disgusted. Look at his face. <laughs> the weasel. What can I say? Oh, he's clearly seen Mr. Robot. What can I say? I'm just thrilled to be a part of it. Yeah, but why? The coup and the, the ultimate score for our show was getting Christian Slater to come in and play Allagash. Why is that guy so creepy? It's like, hey, if you thought that boiling a bunny was bad, you should see what I do to people. It's horrific. And the cast was excited. Dude, why is he not in the series? He was excited. Warwick was less excited. I want to see him as a Bond villain. I think he'd be incredible. And Bond, you get what you deserve. <laughs> Turned out they had a long and complicated history. I genuinely don't know whether he's playing up or that's just him. The Warwick Davis, Christian Slater rivalry, that was the stuff of Hollywood legend. I kind of feel like one person won that though. He stole my idea. And your career. We were mates. Tell him about this passion project I've been working on between Willows. Please say it was Broken Arrow. Instead of John Travolta, you've got Warwick Davis. Can you please stop shooting the thermonuclear weapons? <laughs> it, oh, I'd get to fly a fighter jet. It would have been awesome. I, I need to see the Warwick Davis remake of Broken Arrow. This is Hollywood gold. It's about this sexy DJ in Brixton, London. Well, you're not many of them. They tend to move out after the first mugging. Accused me of plagiarism. Stole his idea, hired a writer and director, released it in theaters in like six months. Well, I mean, that's modern day Hollywood. I don't know why you couldn't have done it back then. I mean, seriously, where's the difficult bit? Oh, I've got to hire a writer. They're literally standing out in the street right now doing absolutely nothing. There's hundreds of them available. They're literally holding up signs asking for a job. We're two weeks away from them going, we'll write for food. Then we've got the actors. They're going to go on strike next. How are they going to survive if they can't lie on camera? These are Hollywood stars. They can't survive just lying to their wives. They need a wider audience. Made the movie and released it in theaters in like six months. I mean, how would that even work? Well, it wouldn't work, but that's never stopped Hollywood before. No, if it fails, just lie about it on the accounting. That's the key. But uh, man, he was pissed. He uh, he came at me hard. Um, oh, well, that is clearly out of order. He didn't even ask for but again, this is Hollywood. It seems to be a danger of the job. A workplace hazard. Why, well, that's what he said. I came at him hard. Can you imagine that? I'm trying not to. Desperately trying not to. I'm British. I don't do things like that. <laughs> oh, well. I see you've never looked into the history of the BBC. Slater, I know what you did, and I'm coming for you hard. <laughs> Why did you put more writing talent into your mockumentary than you did your TV show? I have to find a use for this clip. <laughs> the last place you want to see Warren Ashley Davis is wearing a pound of wicked robe in a crown call room in the old Bailey. Hard. <laughs> it was bad enough, but now I know he's in a robe for easy access. It's even worse. Yeah, he threatened to sue me in the most English way possible. I'm, I'm not sure that was threatening to sue you. He was either going to take you to court or a meal. I'm not sure. Sadly, we never spoke again after that. It was very difficult to talk. We had our mouths full at the time. <laughs> Disney team have been looking at the dailies and they're so excited about Christian. As you'd expect, he's your biggest character. I'm not talking about his size. And given what we just mentioned about Warwick, I'm not going to comment on his size either. Season two could be like if you guys are like, you know, like buddies and like on an adventure. Buddies. Hey, we've already seen the adventure that Ruby Cruz is going to go on in her next TV show. So, uh, hey, Warwick Davis and Christian Slater, let's get it. If they put Christian Slater on Disney+, Plus, they're going to have to change the name to Disney Minus. Well, I mean, they kind of did. At the moment, it's Disney Minus Willow, isn't it? <laughs> hey, guys. Yeah. Good to see you. Yeah. Here. We were one inch away from him punching him in the face. They finally arrived at the silent, burnt-out ruins. Gotta be honest, I've seen better Dungeons & Dragons DMs. It really walks this fine line between being funny. The great thing about our series is it really tries to walk the line of being funny. Never quite manages it, but it's always on that line. It's, it's always almost funny. Sometimes it crosses over accidentally for all the wrong reasons. This kind of dramatic fantasy that we've grown accustomed to with Game of Thrones and- No. No, 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 you are not a dramatic fantasy anywhere near Game of Thrones. I would argue you're not even a dramatic fantasy. The fine line of comedy that you keep introducing is what makes you not a dramatic fantasy. If you wanted dramatic fantasy, you had to play that angle. Your humor undermines that. I didn't even, I genuinely didn't even know that's what you were going for. I thought you were a comedy fantasy, at least attempting comedy fantasy. The only way you can probably mix serious stuff with comedy is if you kind of underplay it. While also keeping it contemporary in a way that's fresh and new. No, your, your fantasy is sword and sorcery. It's not meant to be contemporary and fresh and new. I know what you mean. You mean like Ruby. That doesn't make anything contemporary and fresh or new. 
It doesn't change what you're making. And it really all just kind of stems from the mind of John Kasdan, who is our showrunner and writer. You really stitched him up there, didn't you? Yeah, everything to do with Willow. It's all his fault. Oh, I've just had a horrible realization. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> the showrunner is the one I described as creepy in every scene. I genuinely had no idea who he was. I thought he was like a script writer or something. It's like a jigsaw is missing a piece and then everything snaps into place. And he really stitched him up in this. Yeah, by the way, Willow's getting deleted. It, it all comes from Kazan's mind. It's all his decision. 100% carries the can for this. John Kazan is a very special man. No, we're not. No, no, you can't. No. We know that this is a largely scripted behind the scenes because they're faking a load of stuff for jokes. So it's at least partially scripted. The other guy has come out and said, everything's Kazan. It's all all his everything's amazing it's all sprung from his mind and this means in his own behind the scenes he put in a section about how amazing he is i mean i'm not surprised given what we've seen but the goal one of the most creative individuals i've ever met is that necessarily a compliment to really creative i mean saw was really creative you still wouldn't want him to take notice of you though would you the way he sees this world as something that is just as valuable now as when it was created <laughs> I'll give you that one, mate. You've already said earlier in the documentary, actually, Willow wasn't the big hit that Warwick Davis seems to think it is. And you know what? Nor was the TV series. I think we've proven that. It's now worth absolutely nothing, just as much as the original movie, apparently. You know, John has been wonderful in allowing us to come in. Allowing you to? He employed you. He's paying you. He asked you to come in and do this. Christian, blink twice if you're being held hostage. We can help. And be loose with it. There was quite a few loose characters in the show. I'll give him that one. I'm glad in this they chose one of the scenes where they're at least making eye contact, because a lot of the time Willow was actually looking way over his head. The worst thing is it means they noticed that as well and thought, eh, we'll just leave it in for the TV series no one will notice. As an Asian man, I, I never saw myself. Not only is this a disingenuous argument, but it really doesn't work when you're just doing it for your own career. Very excited to hopefully bring it to life and not ruin it and get fired. Maybe I should have let the clip run a few seconds longer, eh? <laughs> Look, at least we can say that it getting deleted off Disney Plus isn't your fault. Which is a possibility. And a reality, but you know, hindsight's 2020, I guess. At the end of the day, you should have done what the other guy did and just blame it on Kasdan. <laughs> it's all from his mind, we promise. In about 10 seconds, I'm gonna kiss you. So if you don't want that, yes, I, I, I mean, I would be very into that. This conversation has never been had in the entire history of the human species. In about 10 seconds, I'm gonna be, doing, I'm gonna be over there. Sorry, no, no thanks. So absolutely excited to be able to represent the LGBTQ plus community. You represent yourself. When you go through life, you represent- you don't represent anyone else. You're not a hive mind. The only person you represent in life is yourself. The only person you're responsible for is yourself, and arguably your family. Especially something as wide scale as Disney, I think this is huge. Why is this huge in Disney? Disney does this all over the place. Disney does this in literally every show. Why are we treating this as if it's a big deal? Ah, that makes me so excited. Why though? She's so happy. You literally did an entire piece where you're like, yeah, I'm really excited to be in this TV series. I'm like, I'm sure you are. You're getting paid. I'm sure enhancing your career is great for you, but I don't know why in behind the scenes we've got an entire section dedicated to, I'm getting paid, yes. This wasn't unusual in the 90s. Why don't you talk about how honored you are to be part of Willow and to actually act for a living rather than having to engage in real work? I don't get why we have to make our head disappear up ourselves and the fact that, well, it was truly groundbreaking when they decided to employ me. We're Thraxus and you're watching the Disney Plus. Well, at least until the 26th anyway, then it gets deleted. We're about to get yeeted off the platform in a few days. You're watching us, briefly. To become a part of something. Oh, look at what we missed. We could have had that in season two as well. The battle of the moustaches. Think of the new boundaries that we could have broken on Disney. We could have been even more forward looking. And if you don't make it for a few years, you've got an even more modern, modern audience to cater for. Think of the retweets. Imagine the likes they could have gotten. No money, but tons of retweets. To become a part of something that is so beloved by so many people. And no, the original movie was beloved by so many people. This TV series was beloved by me. And I mean, sure, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I'll really miss the show, but it, it was just me. Extend that world even further into something that even more people can love. I there were dozens of us. Dozens. Turned into like one of the greatest experiences of my career. What?
Oh, come on, Christian Slater. Even if the show was a mega hit, you were in one episode and you're calling it one of the greatest experiences of your career. I really hope you got a bonus in the old pay packet for that one. That, or you are practicing for your next role as Pinocchio. So I, I'm very happy to have said yes. Definitely a decent pay packet then, wasn't it? I don't want to leave for real. It's not even like, I know this is an interview, but I'm actually so sad. Yeah, so the interview was done when they were still working on the show is what she means. Like, I know this isn't the end, but I've got to pretend like it's all over. But I'm so sad. Trust me, love. Not as sad as most of you viewers were. Or me, when I found out we weren't getting a season two. Although the 48 hours of constant condolence messages from everyone on Twitter did help. I've never been tweeted at so much in a 48 hour period. The overriding thing I'll take away is, is a set that is full of warmth. It's whales. Cold, wet and overshadowed would have been like a great descriptor, but not the warm. Nobody goes to Wales and gone, whoa, should have, should have put that extra suntan lotion on. <laughs> It was like a sauna all month it was. Not a cloud in sight. <laughs> Just look at the sky. You can see the sheer warmth of the sun beaming through the dark clouds. And a real energy. It's a fake horse. They didn't even have a real horse. Either that or they cut its legs off, which means it was from the set of Rings of Power. When Petter told Rings of Power that they should be using fake horses, I thought they were taking the piss. I didn't know we actually used them. I'm pretty sure that is a photo on his website that you can get signatures for. I think that's the same picture. It is the same picture. Well, basically, they've just done a different pose. We have actually uncovered the merch photo shoot. <laughs> the truth is, people thought Warwick was crazy. I'd love to know where you're going with this one. Now we know the series is getting deleted. But the reality is he was just ahead of his time. Look, Disney may be removing Willow, but they just don't appreciate it. He goes over their head. Willow is just ahead of its time. People will look back on the TV series of Willow if they can find it online, if it hasn't been erased from the archives. And they will say that was classic television. It's going to be a cult classic that people will watch every single year for the rest of eternity and always be in absolute horror that Disney would do anything as disgusting as remove it from their service. The Bigots. <laughs> it can't fit his name on the driver's seat. Hey, going into this, Warwick wasn't my favourite character. Now he is, so at least you've achieved something. Willow is all about it. It's about heart and it's about friendship. It's about coming together. I hope that's the last sentence of the TV show because that would be one hell of a banger to end it on, wouldn't it? For me, this has been a dream that I've had for probably about 30 years. All of this came to you in a dream. I'm so sorry, dude. Nightmares can be tough, but I hope you get over it eventually. Every fan of the movie said, when are you going to make another Willow? We want a sequel. They're not saying it anymore, are they? <laughs> oh, be careful what you wish for. Sometimes Hollywood actually makes it. He always tells us to take in every moment and appreciate all of the little things. Yeah, because you never know if you're going to get a season two. It makes sense. I may be Warwick Davis, titular character of Willow, King of the Ewoks. King of the Ewoks? <laughs> hey, at least the Ewoks were led by a monarchy, eh? Yada, yada, yada. Did you run out of things to say, so you just thought you'd make it sound as if it went on longer? This has been the greatest adventure of my life. Oh, don't put yourself down, mate. I'm sure you've had a better life than that. You're making me feel sorry for you now. Dude, you've got kids. At least say it was one of their births or something. But there we have it. Willow and its great send-off. As we find out... Exactly why the series failed. What they praised was the same reason why it failed. People wanted Willow. They even knew people wanted Willow. And yet we're taking this world and we're making it modern. Yes, this is a very forward-looking show, diving into the future. And that's exactly the problem with it. It left Willow behind and lost everything that made it what people wanted. In their minds, it's old, it's tired, and it's useless. And that is why, because they couldn't even appreciate their roots, they made something which fell off immediately, was entirely unrecognizable, and deleted in five months. Willow was a show that aimed for comedy, but was more often accidentally hilarious as everything fell apart throughout the entire show. But I think if we've learned anything from this final send-off as it gets yeeted into the great beyond, it's quite simply that they have no idea why this show failed. Genuinely have no idea. They couldn't see its flaws, they didn't know its problems, which is why when it got deleted, they were so angry. They can't even recognize something being awful anymore because the very things that mean you won't write a quality script are the very things that they value so highly. Cast, you could have made a decent show. You just would have needed new writers and definitely, most certainly after this, a new showrunner. I would have loved them to get a season two to see if they could course correct into something good or more likely to watch them double down on the first series and see how far we can fall because no matter how low this show could have gotten in the long term, I guarantee you 
it would have been absolutely hilarious to watch. Well, those are just my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know down in the comments below. Like the video if you like the video. Subscribe for more videos like this in the future, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.